today we will discuss homogeneous PDE with constant coefficients. The standard form of the equation is this dou square z by dou x square plus a1 dou z by dou x plus a2 z equal to 0. Here z is the dependent variable and it is present in every term that makes it homogeneous equation. And also we can note that each derivative is with respect to the single independent variable x. With respect to x, you are also with respect to x. Even if I consider third order term, it should be dou cube z by dou x cube. So like that. So if you have an equation of this kind, so that becomes homogeneous PDE with constant coefficients and that can be solved with the method which we are going to learn now. So instead of having x, if z is depending on y, so you can also have this form so that is wherever x you are finding here that can be replaced with y. Okay, so now th this is the case. Just observe these two equations carefully and you can note that this equation looks exactly similar to this equation. It's a second order homogeneous equation with constant coefficients with y is the dependent variable, x is independent variable. To find its solution, you know how to handle this one. First, we will take d by dx equal to capital D. We will put it in the form of some function of dy equal to 0. We will write the auxiliary equation. It has got two roots, m1 and m2. If the two roots are real and distinct, so this is our solution. And if the roots are real and equal, if it is equal to m, this is what our solution is. If the roots are complex, if it is a plus ib or a minus ib, my solution will be in this form. We know this much and if it is a cubic uh, third order equation or fourth order equation we can extend the idea that we will know already in the, if we have learnt it in module 2. So now the question is can we employ the same idea to this? The answer is yes we can do that. Here so here the role of z is played by y and the role of x is played by x itself. So if you solve this equation by taking dou by dou x equal to capital D and writing the auxiliary equation finding the roots and by looking at the nature you are supposed to get two roots and you are supposed to get two arbitrary constants in that solution and you are expressing your solution in terms of x you people know that. Now further if this z is depends on two variables x and y then in that case we have written the answer in terms of x but these two are not the arbitrary constants they should be these two should be arbitrary functions of the other variable y. So c1 is a function of y, c2 is a function of y. In the same lines, in this case, the role of x is played by y. So the role of y is played by z and the role of x is played by y in this case. As a result, your solution will be in the same form, but you are writing in terms of y and the c1 and c2 are arbitrary functions of the other variable. So as we assumed earlier, if the z depends on x and y, the c1 should be a function of x and c2 is also a function of x. So this is the one new thing which you are supposed to remember with respect to partial differential equations. We are just writing c1 and c2 arbitrary constants in ordinary differential equations. In partial differential equations, we are going to get arbitrary functions. So let me try to understand it to the pet. Uh, let me try to understand this through examples. In the first case, let me assume that dou by dou x is equal to capital D. With that, this equation reduces to the form d square minus 2d plus 2z equal to 0. Write the auxiliary equation, find the roots. Roots are 1 plus or minus i in this case. So your general solution should be z is equal to e power x times c1 cos x plus c2 sin x. But here you know that y is the other variable so we are supposed to express c1 and c2 in terms of y that is what we have written here f of y and g of y in the place of c1 and c2. This is what the general solution of the given partial differential equation. But they have given these two conditions it means that we need to find f of y and g of y in it. Now to do this look at the conditions we want dou z by dou x also. So differentiate this equation 1 with respect to x once. Now this is e power x, it's a function of x. If you just observe this one, this is also a function of x. Now this in the form of u into v, product rule should be employed. So dou z by 
डो एक्स इक्वल टू ई पार एक्स इन टू डिफ्रेंसिएशन ऑफ दिस एक्सप्रेशन डिफ्रेंसिएशन ऑफ कॉस एक्स इज माइनस साइन एक्स डिफ्रेंसिएशन ऑफ साइन एक्स इज कॉस एक्स प्लस डिफ्रेंसिएशन ऑफ ई पार एक्स इन टू दिस फंक्शन इज रिटर्न एस इट इज दिस इज माई इक्वेशन नंबर टू नाउ यूज दिस कंडीशन इन इक्वेशन नंबर टू लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इज जीरो रिप्लेस एक्स बाय जीरो इन दिस एक्सप्रेशन ई पार जीरो इज वन साइन जीरो इज जीरो कॉस जीरो इज वन एज ए रिजल्ट यू विल गेट जी ऑफ वाई प्लस एफ ऑफ वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो दैट मेक्स आइर जी ऑफ वाई इज इक्वल टू माइनस एफ ऑफ वाई और एफ ऑफ वाई इक्वल टू माइनस जी ऑफ वाई एंड यूजिंग दिस से नेक्स्ट कंडीशन जेट इक्वल टू ई पार वाई वेन एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो इन द फर्स्ट इक्वेशन वी गेट ई पार वाई इज इक्वल टू ई पार जीरो इज वन cos zero is one, sine zero is zero, so that gives f of y is e power y. So if f of y is known to us, we can write g of y, which is given by minus of f, that is minus e power y. Substitute these two expressions back in this solution, that gives us the required answer. So z equal to e power x, f of y is e power y cos x plus g of y is minus e power y sine x. From these two terms, e power y is common. Just take it out. So it becomes e power x plus y times cos x minus sine x. So this is what the required solution for this differential equation. So this is how any problem under this heading works. So first, very important thing is identify whether the equation is in standard form or not, and whether this is x or y. If this is x, I should write our express our answer in terms of x. If this is y, I should express my answer in terms of y. And C one and C two should be depends on, or uh, these two should be arbitrary functions of the other variable. If it is written in terms of x, so C one and C two are functions of y. If it is written in terms of y, C one and C two are functions of x. Okay, let me consider the next problem now. Do cube u y by do cube u by do y cube plus four do u by do y equal to zero. It's a third order equation. It's fine. Take do by do y is equal to capital D. Put it in the standard form. Write the auxiliary equation. Find the roots. We have got three roots. M equal to zero is a real root. Corresponds to it. We have got c one e power zero y. You can note we are writing our answer in terms of y. C two cos two y plus c three sine two y because y in this case is zero. We get e power zero y that is one. And the c1, c2, c3 should be functions of the other variable. That other variable should be x in this case. So it should be f of x. This is g of x, and this one is h of x. This is fine. This is our general solution of this differential equation. We need to find these three functions by using these three conditions. So let me find do u by do y. Differentiate this with respect to y. So, since f of x is pure function of x, this differentiation is zero, and differentiation of cos two y is minus two sine two y, and differentiation of sine two y is two cos two y. In the same lines, differentiate once again with respect to y, so that gives this expression. Now, using the first condition, u equal to zero when y equal to zero. Here, zero is equal to sine zero is zero, cos zero is one. That gives f of x plus g of x. Or you can write g of x is equal to minus f of x, or f of x equal to minus g of x. Now using our second condition, do u by do y is equal to x when y is equal to zero. Sine zero is zero. That gives two h of x is equal to x. Therefore, h of x is equal to x by two. And use our third condition. So do square u by do y square is equal to x square minus one. This is x square minus one. Put y equal to zero. This term is zero, so we get minus four g of x is equal to x square minus one. So g of x is equal to minus one by four times x square minus one. We have found all the three functions. If g of x is known, we can claim f of x is also known to us. Substitute everything in this equation number one. So our solution is f of x is minus of this. So minus into minus plus one by four times x square minus one. G of x is minus one by four times x square minus one. H of x is given by x by two. So this is what the required answer is. That's okay. So now let me move to the next problem. And you can note this is a third order equation once again, and it is not in standard form. What is the problem here? 
here we have written the derivative with respect to x as well as with respect to t so this is not the standard form for us so the one way to handle this one is integrate this with respect to t and that will give so dou square u by dou x square minus u is equal to integration constant should be a function of the other variable x but the problem with this is it's a non-homogeneous equation and we don't know how to handle this because we have a term which is free from u it's a non-homogeneous second order equation we don't know how to handle this so what should be done what else can be done in this problem then so instead of that put dou u by dou t is equal to some z with that this becomes dou square z by dou x square minus z equal to 0 so take dou by dou x is equal to capital D and this becomes a d square minus 1 z equal to 0 and write your auxiliary equation is m square minus 1 equal to 0 so the roots are plus or minus 1 so our complementary function our general solution of this equation is z equal to x plus in terms of x c1 e power x plus c2 e power minus x but c1 and c2 should be what this two should be functions of the other variable t so z equal to f of t e power x plus g of t e power minus x but i don't want z i want u so z is nothing but what dou u by dou t write it in this place that gives f of t e power x plus g of t e power minus x further i am interested in finding the value of u so what should be done integrate this with respect to t that gives e power x into integration of f of t plus e power minus x into integration of g of t and integration of f of t is written as capital F integration of g of t is written as capital G in this case that's fine next is I am supposed to use these three conditions and the third condition says dou square u by dou x dou t is required so differentiate this equation 1 with respect to x that will give dou square u by dou x dou t that is f of t is a constant differentiation of e power x is e power x differentiation of e power minus x is minus e power minus x we have these three equations now so use the conditions so now if i use the second condition dou u by dou t equal to 0 when x equal to 0 in this equation we get e power 0 is 1 dou u by dou t is 0 so this is what my equation is and using my this third condition in equation number 3 that gives t is equal to e power x is 0 e power x is 1 f of t minus g of t so just add these two equation that will give 2f of t is equal to small t but i want capital f of t in this expression so integrate this that gives t square by 4 if f of t is known g of t is given by what minus of f of t that is minus t by 2 and r integration that gives capital g that is minus t square by 4 now substitute this capital f and capital g back in this equation number 2 so that will give us this expression but it still contains h of x to find h of x use the remaining condition u equal to x square by 2 and t equal to 0 if t is equal to 0 these two terms are 0 and this one is x square by 2 that is equated to what h of x so i know capital f capital g h substitute everything in this one that gives us the required answer and since e power x minus e power minus x by 2 is sine hyperbolic x, I have written in that form. So, this is what the required answer for this problem. I have just discussed all the possibilities here. And I am just giving you three more problems for you people to work out. So, please try these problems. These things are, these are very simple problems. So, please try them. I hope you people are comfortable with this now. Thank you all.